It was 21 days before his 11th birthday when tragedy struck Gilbert Belknap and his family. His father, Rosal, was killed while riding a horse in a race. Three months and one day later, his mother died. By the laws of the country, Gilbert, as an orphan, was given over as an indentured apprentice. Both my parents died just about the time I turned 11 years of age, leaving me with little education. Though I had been apprenticed to William C. Moore, who was a wheelwright, Mr. Moore was deeply in debt. He decided to leave Canada and gave me a few days to visit my brothers and sisters. Being young and inexperienced in the world, I was made to believe that I was bound to him by the Articles of Indenture. We soon made our way to Niagara County, New York. Eleven years earlier, at the time of his birth, Gilbert was the fifth child of Jane and Rosal Belknap. He was born in Port Hope on December 22, 1821. Port Hope is across Lake Ontario from Rochester, New York, and was in an area called Upper Canada, but at the time, most people considered it synonymous with the United States. Gilbert's father, Rosal, was a horse racer. He participated in horse and carriage racing in what was called the Trotter Race. This is the event that would later take his life. Jane Richmond and her family were from the nearby town of Hamilton. In total, Jane and Rosal had eight children before they both died. After spending over a year as an indentured servant to Mr. Moore, Gilbert learned that he was not legally in bondage since Mr. Moore had brought him to the U.S. and his debts were in Canada. With his newfound freedom, Gilbert started his journey to return home. When I returned home, I was appalled to find my once happy home belonging to someone else. My brothers and sisters had been driven out to seek the hospitality of strangers. I was astounded to learn that my oldest brother, Jesse, had availed himself of the hereditary laws of Canada and sold the happy home of my youth. He then squandered the money in assuming the vain appearance of that of a gentleman. Incensed at this injustice committed by his brother, Gilbert, still a young teenager, was determined to make his own way in the world. With his youngest brother, Thomas, who was about five years old at the time, by his side, Gilbert left home. After walking for three days and only 30 miles from home, they took up residence with a Christian preacher by the name of Stone, from whom Gilbert earned $5 per month, part of which went toward the board and education of Thomas. Thomas was later placed with a Quaker family while Gilbert remained with Mr. Stone until 1837. Soon joined an American company of light horse rangers from 1837 to 1839 in the Upper Canada Rebellion between Great Britain and the United States. He was quickly promoted to the active rank of first sergeant. Taken prisoner and held in Toronto for nearly 10 months, Gilbert suffered greatly from malnourishment and the effects from being shackled with 60 pounds of irons. On June 19, 1839, Gilbert and four other American prisoners of war were released by their British captors to a cheering crowd of thousands of Americans. They traveled to Niagara Falls, then went on to Buffalo to celebrate the 4th of July. Gilbert found work in Buffalo at a carriage shop. He remained there until the fall of 1839 when he decided to spend the winter in New Orleans. Gilbert spent the next year traveling around the Ohio River. In 1840, he finally took a job in New Bedford, Ohio. While residing there, Gilbert overheard a conversation about a nearby Kirtland and the Mormon temple. Intrigued, Gilbert left three days later for Kirtland. Impressed by the temple, he ended up staying in Kirtland, first taking up a small job of chopping and then working for a man named Crary for eight months on his farm. During the winter of 1840, I formed a close acquaintance with several Mormon families. By close observation, I satisfied myself that they lived their religion better and enjoyed more of the Spirit of the Lord than any people I had ever known. I strove to make myself familiar with their principles of religion. After a diligent investigation of two years, I satisfied myself with regard to the truth of Mormon beliefs and determined at some future date to obey its principles. This is the start of our beloved ancestors' journey to know and understand the gospel of Jesus Christ. 
The events in Kirtland and subsequent baptism and dedication to the church led our grandfather to Nauvoo and later the Salt Lake Valley. Just two months before his death in Utah, Gilbert left a charge to his great posterity. May the influence that I have and the priesthood that I bear be used to induce my posterity to seek first the kingdom of God and its future greatness on the earth. <laughs>